Okay, so I've had to delay my power adapter video and also putting my low profile cooler into my casing that I normally use for my Pi. Uh, and also I've had to delay this 3D printing cost video because we have another update to Raspberry Pi OS and it's a proper update. So let's have a look at it. The latest update to Raspberry Pi OS. We've just released the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. This time around it is mostly a wrapping up of all the bug fixes and new versions of software which have been released since the previous image in April. But there are a few small tweaks to the user experience which we should probably mention. And this is the one I'm most excited about. Uh, new searchable main menu. So I've moaned for a long time that Raspberry Pi OS didn't have a way of searching for apps. And uh, it's one of the reasons that I use KDE Plasma. Uh, which is based on Raspberry Pi OS, but it adds this really nice menu uh, and say I want to launch Raspberry Pi Imager, I can just start typing. Uh, you can even start typing without pressing the Windows key, but I really like the way that works. So I'll be interested to see that in a minute. So for people who'd rather type than move the mouse, we've modified the main menu plugin on the taskbar to allow text searching. Just hit the Raspberry Pi key on your keyboard, which is usually the Windows key on a non-Raspberry Pi keyboard, to open the main menu and start typing the name of the application you want to launch just what I want. By the way, I haven't read through this yet. So you see a list of applications. You can use the cursor to move up and down and hit enter to launch it. And if you don't start typing, it will work as it did before. We've got a new audio input control, new Pi Camera 2 Python camera interface, new keyboard shortcuts. So control B for Bluetooth, control W for Wi-Fi. And they're doing something with network managing. Well, hopefully, because this version of KDE, I had to do something to get it to work with Wi-Fi uh, and be able to switch between networks. So hopefully it doesn't break that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when I update this. So how do we get it? So from the downloads page, uh, can also be flashed straight to an SD card using Raspberry Pi Imager. Obviously you could flash it to a USB device like an SSD or an M.2 drive, but you can also update uh, an existing image. Well, maybe I'll try that. No, I think I'm gonna go for a clean install. So let's close that down, type in Imager, and launch it. Mm, I guess I'll have the latest version. It'll probably show up in the updates. Okay, so there's loads of updates. So I think I'm not gonna bother updating Imager in this because it's all part of all of these loads and loads of updates. And I really wanna see if that breaks anything in my version of KDE Plasma. So let's close that down. Uh, let's go back to Imager and just see if it's here. If, it, if the newest version is here, yeah, so 6th of September. And are we the same? with the 64-bit version. Yes, we have a new version here as well. So let's click on that. Choose storage. I'm gonna put it on a Samsung bar. This is a 64 gig one. So let's pop that into a USB 2 socket because I don't generally plug in two USB 3 drives at the same time. That shows up. So let's select the drive and write and yes and okay. Okay, that's all done. So let's shut this down. Switch off and I can unplug my KDE Plasma drive and let's pop this Samsung bar into a USB 3 socket and reboot. And it's booting in the normal way. Okay, so all of this looks the same. It prompts you to create a password now rather than use the default ones. It defaults to filling the screen as well, which is nice. Can't remember if this looks the same or not. I'm gonna skip because I've got an ethernet cable and I am gonna do the update, but I wouldn't think it will find anything. Oh, it is downloading something and installing, so it was very small. Okay, and restart. Okay, so obviously it looks very familiar. If I press the Windows key, you can see that it comes up and I can use the cursors to select various different apps. Uh, and it's if you start typing, so if I start typing Imager, you can see that it comes up. Yeah, that's nice and snappy. Uh, the great thing about this, I still use this for a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W because KDE Plasma is too heavy for that. The Pi 4, it actually works great with, but when you're uh, lacking RAM and uh, you've got a slower processor, then actually you need it to be just functional. And this is very basic. There's no extra effects or anything like that, but you can get straight into an app. I wonder if it works for settings as well. So if I do, say I started typing Bluetooth, no, it doesn't work for settings. Well, I'm guessing it doesn't. Worse when we try display. Yeah, it doesn't work for settings. But again, the reason they might have done that, uh, and I've been playing around with my iPad Mini 2, which is a very old iPad. I've been turning off every little feature to get the best out of it. And I've actually made it much more usable. 
and this is what we need on the older Pis because remember Raspberry Pi OS has to work with all the older Pis. So let's try some of these shortcuts. Control Alt B oh, and Control Alt W. Okay, so the shortcuts aren't working for me. I wonder if that, so if I press Control Alt Delete just to show that something is working uh, and Control Alt T for terminal. Yeah, so other shortcuts are working. So maybe it's something that's been left out on the 64 bit OS. And it does actually talk about the network manager functionality being switchable and you have to turn it on. So I don't think I'm going to because I don't have an issue with network manager, but it says that it comes with a lot more features in it. But that's good news for my KDE Plasma because it means you don't have to use it. But if you do want to use it, uh, it's in Raspberry Config. And rather than type it in terminal, I'm going to see if it comes up here. Configuration. Oh, maybe I have to press enter on it. Oh yeah, so, so left clicking doesn't work, that's a bit weird. And we don't get advanced options on here, so I'm gonna have to do it from terminal. So control alt T, sudo raspi dash config, advanced options, into option AA, network config, option two, network manager. Well, I can change it in this, because um, this is just a test OS. And then reboot when prompted. So let's finish and reboot, yes. Okay, so restarted without the Ethernet cable in to see what happens. Uh, so if I click on this, oh, you can see my 5G network and also I've got a 2.4G for older devices. So I'm going to click into the 5G one and pop the password in. I think that's what it is. Okay, so that's connected. So what sort of options do we have in this? So turn it off, uh, connect between the available networks, advanced options, connect to a hidden network, create a wireless hotspot. That's interesting. So years ago, and it must be like 15 years ago, I worked at a place that only had the internet on a wired network. And I used one of the Windows 7 devices to create a wireless hotspot, which all of us used to use. Um, so like, I don't know, about six, seven staff used to log in on their phones on other devices. I used to use it for smart TVs and it used to work brilliantly. So let's see what happens if we try and add that. Let a VPN option there as well. So create wireless hotspot. Let's call it the PSP video. Wi-Fi security. So we have options here, but I'm going to go with none just so I don't have to put a password in. I'm not going to leave it on. Hit create and you can see it's been disconnected. So we're going to need to plug back the Ethernet cable. So let's plug that in and that should show that it's got a network. Yeah, so on my iPad, uh, let's go to Wi-Fi. So it's connected to my Vodafone network at the moment. So let's click on that and see if we've got, yeah, we've got a new, oh, I spelled it wrong. Look, <laughs> I can't even spell my own channel name. Uh, so LEPSP video, let's click on that and unsecured network comes up. Uh, how long, it, yeah, that's pretty quick, quick to connect. Right, let's go back in and do a search, let's go for Hot UK Deals and see what happens, oh yeah, brilliant. So that is really, really easy. So how do we disconnect that? Uh, because I've got an open, <laughs> I've got an open connection to my network now. So uh, here we go, advanced options, edit connections, uh, there's my video. I wonder if you can change the settings. Oh yeah, so I could, look, I could name it, I could name it correctly, look. But I'm just going to delete that. So let's hit minus and delete. Yeah, that to be fair, that's decent. That's very, very easy and a really nice feature. So if you have a wired network, you want to get access to it, you can just use a Pi running Raspberry Pi OS very, very simply. The new audio input control. So is that just going to look different, I guess? Again, this might not be on the 64-bit uh, version because I think that looks different to the picture might be because I haven't got a microphone plugged in. And it says about the Pi camera too, look out for a blog post in the next few days. So I think I'm gonna wait for that to come out. So yeah, excellent. I really like Raspberry Pi OS as an operating system. It runs incredibly well on low powered devices, uh, but I'm gonna still continue to use KDE Plasma on my main build because I prefer the extra features it gives you, but then I've got a Pi 4 for it. I've been using the 64-bit version, but if you're using uh, an older device than the Pi 4, you're probably better off on the 32-bit version because it runs better on those older or slower devices. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.